Amen. Um, Minister Evan, could you open us in prayer, please? Let us let us pray. Father, you are great, you are awesome, you are wonderful. You are just mighty. You are God alone. There is none like unto you. You are God all by yourself. And Lord, I thank you that it is you who are God. Lord, as we come into this virtual space this evening, Lord, to learn, to, to expand our minds, to expand our capacity, mighty God, for the things of you, for the things concerning you. We thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity to be in your presence. We thank you this evening, God, for our presenter and our tutor, Reverend David O. Ferguson. We pray in the name of Jesus, mighty God, as he imparts knowledge, God, that you have blessed him with unto your children. We pray, God, that you'll continue to bless him, that you'll continue to lead him, that you'll direction for him, God. We pray that this evening, God, will be a session, Lord, that we will remember. We pray, God, that you will touch each and every one of us, and what that which has been imparted unto us this evening, mighty God, we will hold on to Lord, and we will use it for the upliftment of your people, of your church, oh God, in this in this crooked world that we are. Cover us now, lead us and direct us, we pray, we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, Hallelujah. amen. Um, today we're going to be dealing with the ministry of angels. Many persons have some views about angels that is not scriptural. I see angels are like a baby with wings flying half naked around the place. But as we see, the angels actually are more than that. I'm going to try to stick to the topic and try to go cheat as fast as we can. We can get questions. Now, the Hebrew word, as you know, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Angel is Malak. And the New Testament, written in Greek, in, in the New Testament word, angel is, is called, is Agelos, the Greek word Agelos. And they mean messengers, messenger. So I've saw the attributes, nature, and ministry of angels. There are these things that are beings from mankind on the garden. Even though they, they do not put it, if sorry, even though they, they do not have material bodies, because they are spirits. In Psalm 104, verse 4, who makes his angels spirits is ministers of flame and fire. They sometimes reveal themselves in bodily form. Matthew 1, 20, and the other, other, other references. They possess great strength, and, but are not, not omnipotent. We saw in 2 Kings 19, 25, that night, the angel of the Lord went, went out and put to data 185,000 in the ASEAN camp. He says, the, the angel of the Lord, when the people got up next morning, they were all dead bodies. One killed 185,000 in one night. They have a will and can make individual choices. And this saw Lucifer in Isaiah 14. He says, I will. They can make choices. In heaven, there are millions of them, and they are constantly involved in praise and worshiping God and, and other things as well. God uses them to ensure that his people are protected and delivered. Psalm 91, 11, for he command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. God used them to guide and encourage believers, Matthew 28, 5-7. An angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which is was crucified. He's not here. For his reason, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples. And they bring revelation from God to men. Revelation 1-1, one, one, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show the servants, which was shot, to come to pass, you make it known by sending his angels to, to Sir and John. Give me a second, please. We need to chairman, chairman, chair. Sir, what now? They bring revelation from God to men. I just saw Revelation 1 1. God used angels to mediate the law of Moses. Acts 7 53. You have received the law by the disposition of angels. The scriptures record that Lazarus the beggar was carried to Abraham's bosom by angels when he died. Luke 16 22. There are times 
when God used them to carry out judgment on individuals individual and society. Acts 12, 3 did that to Herod. Genesis 19, 12, Solomon Gomorrah. Note that note active role they play in the judgment of the tribulation. Revelation 16. Elijah right, was fed by an angel. They seem to expect that vows made to God are honored. Ecclesiastes 5, 4 to 6 record. When your voice of vow unto God, if I'm not to pay it for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which you, you have vowed. But it is, it is that you should not vow than you should vow and not pay. So for not to knife your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Let us say before the angel that it was an error. So angels seem to be involved in carrying vows that he made to, to bring to pass. They are only loyal to God. Psalm 1 and John 3 verse 20. Bless Lord is his angels. And excel in strength, that do his commandments and add unto the voice of his word. In Joshua 5, he said that Joshua saw an angel by Jericho. He saw a man, lifted lift, lift up his eyes and looked and behold a man to opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Listen to what the angel said. No, but as command of the armies of the Lord, I have come. I'm not for you, not your adversaries. I'm for the Lord. If God must kill you, I can't kill you. If God must kill adversaries, I can't kill adversaries. Daniel 10, 12 to 14, Revelation 8, 36. See angel, angel activity when the saints are praying. In this passage in Daniel, we see Gabriel and Michael, two of the ranking angels involved in ensuring that Daniel's prayers answer. In the reference from Revelation, we see angels carrying our prayers. To God and return with the answers which are poured on the earth. These are very active, the life and ministry of Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't realize how, how active angels are. They inform Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds about Christ's birth. Luke 1 26 38, Matthew 1 20, Luke 8 2 sorry, 2 8 15. They ministered to Jesus after his temptation. Matthew 4 11. Was trained by angel in, an angel in Gethsemane, Luke 22, 43. 12 legions that sent 2,000 angels would have been would have rescued Jesus from his, his crucifixion. Right? If he had requested it. Now, guess what? Jesus could have caught us a father if I would have sent 12 legions of angels. Sent 2,000. Guess what? The same angels are, are, are available to the believers. An angel rolled the stone from the empty tomb and informed the woman who came to the tomb that they had risen from the dead and was no longer there. Matthew 28, 2 to 7. Angels were present as he ascended into heaven. I spoke to the disciples who were present and witnessed the event in Acts 1 11. You see, angels are very involved in Jesus' life. Other angel activity. Luke 15 10. Like what I said unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angel of God. Were once in their repent. There is rejoicing in their presence when evil once in their repent. Party, big party go on in heaven. Before the angels. When one once in our repent, can you imagine a crusade when 30 people get saved, 40 people get saved? They cannot rejoicing that go on in, in their presence. They observe all the affairs of men and are pleased or offended. As a passage on women's head covering. Seems to suggest, suggest 1 Corinthians 11.10. They observe all the affairs of men. They make important announcements in the time of the Great Tribulation. Revelation 14, 6, 11, 18, 2, and 21. They will protect, seal God's servant, and carry out the prescribed judgment during that time. The Revelation. <laughs> Revelation, they tell us that um that God told him to not hurt the sea or the land or the trees. And he had sealed the servants in there for the angel went and sealed God's servants. They are involved in it. They are very involved in the second coming of Christ and the judgment. Matthew 13, 37, 39, 40, and 15, verse 2. Sorry, 2 Thessalonians 1 7. It was 1 6. Daniel 7 9 to 14. Closing comments about angels and believers. Oh, angels and believers relate. We're not supposed to worship angels. 
Remember that. Do not worship angels. Revelations 19, 10 and 28 to 9. Can we look at it? Could someone define Revelations 19, 10 for me? I saw the fun. Revelation 22, 8 to 9. Maybe ask it means everyone to find 1910. This is the Veronica to find eight to nine. Can you find it? Can I read it, please? Well, can you hear me? I'm not hearing any of Yes, I can hear you. Hello? And anybody phone that they're passing can go ahead and read it. Revelation 19, verse 10. Yeah. Yeah. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant mm -hmm. and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Um, next, um next. Revelation 22, 8 and 9. Could someone just read that, please? And, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the, before the feet of the angels, which showed things. Then said he unto me, See, thou do, if not, for I am thy fellow servants and of thy brethren and the prophet, prophets and of them which keep the saints of the book worship God. He, uh, he, he, angel who told, accompanied him told him not to do it. Don't attempt to worship the angels. If you figure John would know better than him, well, guess what? The presence of God was so strong in them. It was easy to mistake them. It says in Exodus 20, 22 to 5, you shall not make a first of an image in the form of anything in heaven, above or on earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them nor worship them. By the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God. We're not, we're not supposed to worship them. Secondly, we, they have been given direct responsibility concerning believers. Psalm 37, 34, 7. In the Lord, encamp and run about them that fear and deliver them. Psalm 91, 11 to 12. We shall give his angel charge concerning you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands as you dash your foot against the stone. Don't think about that. Is that them, that, that the Bible saying? Uh, to this angel, let's say his name Raphael. Raphael, listen, you're in charge of everyone. You know? Everyone can't him bunk him, bunk him big to you know. You have to make sure I'm safe. Am I right? They have been given charge. God give them charge. God command them to look after us. And sometimes, as Christians, we are so afraid. Don't understand the angel of the Lord encamp it around the world of that him. He give his angels charge to keep us in all our ways. Amen. So we need to realize that. Amen. Um, we, we, we have finished the, the topic, but we're gonna go back over it again. Uh go to, to the questions. This five example of nature of the nature attributes and ministry of angels. Five examples. I'm gonna go to the answers. Maybe give me a second. We go to the 
the, the five examples of the nature attributes and ministry of angels. One, they're distinct set of beings from mankind and the Godhead. They're not God and they're not men. Who they do not have material bodies, and they are spirits. They sometimes reveal themselves in bodily form. Four, they possess great strength. They're not omnipotent and they're, not, they're not all powerful. Five, they are willing and can make individuals choices. Six in heaven, there are millions of them. They are constantly involved in praising and worshiping God. Seven, God uses them to ensure that his people are protected and delivered. Eight, God uses them to guide and encourage believers. Nine, they are bringing revelation from God to men. Ten, God uses angels to mediate the law. Eleven, the scripture records that Lazarus was carried into Abraham's bosom by angels. It's possible. From that, that means that when you die, angels carry you. Spirit and soul, the presence of God. Well, there have been time when God used them to be our know, judgment on individuals and society. I remember hearing somebody curse, curse God. I heard a story about this young man. He went to a crusade, and the, the, the evangelist said to him, Young man, Holy Spirit said that you must save us, stop disrespecting him. And the, the young man said, you and the Holy Spirit go F and take bad with them. They said, within, within the week, on the Wednesday, they saw him walking on the road and just, just dropped him off and died. You don't understand the seriousness of it. And sometimes allow them to carry out judgment. Elijah was fed by angels. I remember a, a, an incident. My wife mother was walking upstairs and she fell back and would have damaged herself really badly. She felt hands hold her up and carry her there back on her feet. A friend of mine said that one day he was home and a beggar came to the house and begged him for some water. And he, he first was upset and was going to run him but he decided to give him the water. When he went for the water and came back out, the man was missing. And he looked up on the road, I couldn't find a man. It was very like an angel was there. Right, right about 9 11, there are people that I'm told were kind of trying to come downstairs from the, the bombing of the, the, the World Trade Center tower. And they saw an old lady saying, I can't walk so fast. Can you help me? And they helped her. By doing that, they were late and getting to a certain floor that got damaged. They were, they, were, they, were, they, they were eventually rescued and they could not find the old lady. Angels are around us all the time working, all the time doing things. Elijah was fed by angels. By an angel. The time God God would organize things with his angels. No, can, can we look at this? Ecclesiastes 5, 46. Could someone define it? Ecclesiastes 5, 46. Could you find that? Read it, please. Anyone? Ecclesiastes 5, 4 to 6. Okay, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 4 to 6. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, sis. When thou vowest a vow unto God, differ not to pay it, for he had no pleasure in fools, Pay that, pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not, suffer not thy mouth to cause the flesh to sin. Neither say to, neither say to thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words. Verse 6. Diverse. Oh, stop at 6. Okay. Well, it, it said the angels came to, 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 to collect the vow. Sometimes when they say, God, I'll serve you so and so. But I won't do so and so. 
God hears and the angel may release help ensure that he get it done. They they seem to they're only loyal to God and his word. Understand this next point, point 16. Angels are active when, in, when the saints pray. Did you know that? Angels are active. We release um, angels when we begin to pray. Let's look at Daniel 10, 12 to 14. Let me find it. Daniel 10. I want to find this one because... This this past the particular passage is very interesting. I'm gonna share on the screen. Amen. No, oh, it's a, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. Messi was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. Messi was true, but the appointed time was long. They understood the message and the understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks, and no pleasant food, nor no meat, nor wine came to my mouth. But did I honor myself at all? Till three walks, whole weeks were fulfilled. Mask question How many, all our Daniel fasting for? Anybody tell me? Can I meet you, Mike? I mean, two persons two person answering. All our Daniel fasting for? Anybody can answer. For three full weeks. Right. How long is that? What days? 21, 21 days. Right. 21 that, days. That was fast for 21 days. At the end of the time, it says, uh, as I was by the side of the Great River, Tigris, I lift up my eyes and look, and build up a man cold and linen. We so good with Gola Ufas. It says, in verse 7, I done alone saw the vision, and the men who were with me did not see the vision, but great fear fell upon them. Look at verse um 12. Then he said to me, Do not fear Daniel, for the from, from the first that, that you set your heart, understand to humble yourself before your God, the word you heard. And I've come because of your word. So the angel said, Daniel, because you prayed from the first day. On the first day, set your hand. 21 days from, from the first day. I am come. I, I, I was released. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia would to me 21 days. All I was done in the fasting for. 21 days. And Bill Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. But I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Now let me explain what happened. When Daniel when started to pray, God they heard them same time and released the answer. It took 21 days for the answer to come. Why? Because the Prince of Persia. Now I'm gonna share something here, a little, little um concept. Most people don't know this, but the scripture says that we battle against principalities against Paul's against rulers of darkness. Demonic prince, demonic spirits have, have ranks, have hierarchy. And sometimes they're over communities. For example, you might notice in some community, everybody commits violence. More like a spirit of death or violence is there. And there's a place downtown Kingston where they say most of the murders take place. They follow that during slavery, they, they hung and kill a lot of lot of slaves in that area. And they see that the blood keep calling for more blood. There are places that accidents take place all the time. You can't explain this. Sometimes it seems like as though a spirit has been released in that era. Um, in I don't want to call any any name, but there are some eras where they practice certain lifestyle. Everybody there do it. Cause a spirit of seem to be over the place. The Bible said uh, the, the prince of the king of Persia. There was a prince over the, 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 the kingdom of Persia that was from Satan that went to Daniel. So I went to the angel 21 days. Well, I was doing Daniel fasting for 21 days. 
and Michael had to come and help him to win the battle. No, no, I'm gonna explain that to you how, how it affects you. There are times you are praying and answer those things to call and tell something. God hears your prayer. And all faith gives the angel motivation to go and fight him. When they give up, he cannot work beyond what he's believing for. When they give up, he has to stop. What does that mean? You're praying for something. Don't start. Even look like it's not going to happen. If God said it, believe God. Sometimes there's an expression, the darkest time of the night is just before daybreak. And it's important to understand this. That sometimes we're the ones that stop the answers from coming. Or give up. Um, do you recall... Um, um, the angel came to 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 John to John's father, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, and told him his wife would have a son. And Zechariah didn't believe the angel. And started to say, But well, my wife is old, and the, the angel did what? Shut him up, make him dumb, because his speech would have affected coming to pass. Angels hear what you say, they recognize your faith. And sometimes because of what you God wants to do for you, that affects you, or you decide whether it happens or not. Daniel kept on fast for 21 days. The angel was fighting. Sometimes Satan tried to get you to stop. You're fast and you start to feel hungry. Or things go wrong in the house. You want to stop fasting. Because Satan knows that if you keep on fasting, the answer is going to come to pass. With the scripture, we have to keep pushing and pressing. Because the truth give the angels, allow the angels to continue to work. We allow the angels to go. Our prayers. Angels come to answer the prayers. And we keep telling them they're bringing the answer. They're bringing the answer. They're fighting to bring the answer to us. And we give up and they have to not bring it. The second example is in Revelations chapter. Eight, three to six. I'm going to turn to there. I want us to see the work of angels. Read. No, I find, I find. In fact, can you see my screen? When is it ever? Yes, sir, I can. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. One second. I'll see the reading from three to six. From verse three to verse, verse five. Can I read that? It's on the screen. Carry the screen. No, sir. Too small for me. Need micro, micro. Is that phone you using? Is that phone, yes. Oh, but I, I can I can I have my Bible open. I can read from it. Okay, read, read from the Bible. From verse 3 to verse 6. Revelation 8, from verse 3 to verse 6. 3 to 6. Revelation 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Four, and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God, out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightning. Verse 6, oh. and the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. All right, let, let, let me explain what this I'm, I'm in, in Revelation. Um, um, the seven sea was open, and John saw an angel having a golden censer. And it was so, so the altar, it, it began to mix the sin, incense with the prayers of the saints, and offered it to God. So angels carried the Present the sin to God. And then he took, 
he took um from the from the from the altar incense and threw it into earth. What does this mean? That when you pray, angels hear our prayers, carry it to God, mix it with with, with God's word with incense, and begin to respond. In fact, um, what happens is that in Revelation, the, the seven trumpets began to sound. The only place after the saints had begun to pray. Sometimes God is waiting for us to pray about it, pray about matters. And these angels are waiting in the wings, waiting to pick up our prayers and mix it with incense and begin to offer to God for God to respond and they take the, the answers and pour it into heart. Angels are involved in our prayers as well. It's so powerful. Um, the next question, Licks, there's three examples of angel activity, activity in the life of Jesus. Anybody want to answer? Three, three activities the angel did in the life of Jesus. It's on the screen. Um, the first one is they inform Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds about Christ's birth. Do you recall Inform that? Do you recall that in the scriptures that they came to Mary and talked to Mary about she was gonna, gonna, gonna get pregnant? Yes, sir. Then Joseph, the angels talked to Joseph and said, Hey, your wife pregnant, but it's for the Holy Ghost. The seed that in her is, is, is not, didn't come as sexual union. It came the Holy Spirit anointing. You, your egg, your ovum. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? The angels, the shepherds were in the field looking after their sheep and angels came and started rejoicing and telling them about Jesus. Angel did that. Matthew 4, 11. Jesus had been tempted. And after the temptation, angels came and ministered to him. He came and strained him. Third one, you're strained by angel in Gethsemane. M many persons don't realize how difficult it would have been for Jesus as a man to be killed on the cross. And he was he was he was laboring about it. The Bible says that his tears, his, 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 his sweat became drops of blood. What it means is that the, the, the capillaries in his, on their skin, the stress level was so high, it broke the capillaries, the blood vessels began to burst. And blood came into, into his Sweat, sweat duct. And he had to be strained by an angel. And they came and strained him. It was difficult for him. In fact, the scripture said, he said, he says, Lord, if it be that be a will, let this go pass from me. But then they, 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 they never gave him like anesthetics to then the pain. They just beat the nails into, into his wrist. Beat the nail into his feet. It would have been difficult. And Jesus had seen crucifixion before. When the angel came and strained him. That time angel was strained you. The Bible tells us 12 legions of angels would have been released to Jesus. If he had asked. But if he had asked, the, the plan of God would have come to pass. This is the scripture said, angel roll away the stone from the entry to him. But the stones, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't move it. He's had to uh, roll it away. You're present. And you're sent into heaven. In Acts 1, Acts 1 11. It was, they were there. They, they said to the disciples, Why are you standing looking into heaven? Same Christ will come in the same way you see him go. Other activities. Did you know? Did you? I'm gonna ask a question. I'm gonna teach a little later on how to win, how to win souls, how to lead somebody to the Lord. But did you know there's rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents? Did you, did, the Bible said there's more joy in heaven when one sinner than they repent than a church full of people worshiping. There's more joy. Can you imagine when they go to church on Sunday and worshiping? God don't, God don't find it as exciting as when, when one man leads people to the Lord. Think about that. 
If you want to bring joy, God more joy, win souls. Not to be every day, but guess what? You can't you can pray for your co-workers, pray for your neighbors. For them regularly, so God, touch your heart, touch your heart, touch your heart. Bring joy to the heart of God. Cause rejoicing in heaven. Amen. First Corinthians 11 talk about angels notice when you, you, you're not under authority. God used them to make announcement during tribulation. Angels came and made statements and declarations. Angels were there. They protect. In fact, I want to look at this. Revelation 7. Just notice something. Verse 1 says, After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. And the wind that wind should not blow on the earth, on this year, on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seed of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to, to harm the earth and the sea. And saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till after I have sealed the servants of God and her forehead. He puts a mark on the believers. Say that so they, they will not be touched. There's something to learn from that. God put a mark on his people when he's causing judgment. In, 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 in Egypt, but God made a distinction between Israel and Egypt. Put a mark on them so that in, there's no they, they, they will not be hurt. In fact, one reference said that he told them to put the blood on the on their, their lintels and their posts. So the 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 destroyer would walk over Passover. God puts a mark on us with the angels. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna stop it. Any questions? Any questions? Any comments? Yes, sir. Good night, sir. Again. Good night. Um, we all know where by um angels are distinct. There are distinct set of beings from mankind yes. and the God and the God read on um I'm on the first page. Um, if we should be explaining, all right, how would I put this question? Um, the diff we know that the attributes of angels are different from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, man. How at times can we differentiate if it's the Holy Spirit or if it's um the angel? We I know that they are different, you know, but the attributes are different. But um, based on how angels work, you know, they are messengers, quick messengers, they move real fast. But yes. um, some persons, I think, mix up the, the attributes of an in, of angels with the attributes of the Holy Spirit at times. How can you um, explain that? Uh, this meeting, I will not be able to explain all the details, but I'm going to try to try to as best as I can. Many persons have a feeling about the Holy Spirit. That's not scriptural. We think the Holy Spirit is, is the one that touch your body and you feel good, excited. Sometimes it's just your response. Let, let, let me give, give a description. I'm gonna find find I have um I have there's a, a come in. Give me a second. Da, da, da. There's a uh, message I'm doing. I'm going to see if I can. It's called Needs versus Purpose. I'm going to try to share something about God. We, we sometimes misunderstand who God is. Um, I'm going to... I'm, I'm writing this book as well. So it's about attributes of, of the... Of the um, I'm gonna try to find it for you. 
by the description of eternal God. Now we know that God is Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. L let me give you a little, little idea of the size of God. Sometimes we think God is like a bigger human being we can talk to. Actually, God is much bigger than that. Um, is there anybody who can read my screen? I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to make it bigger. All right. Can you read the, the, the unfathomable size of God? You cannot measure. Somebody can read that, please. Read in Second Chronicles six eighteen, but God will indeed dwell with men on the earth. Behold, and the heaven and the heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. God is much larger than the universe. How large is the universe? The universe is measured in light years. It is the distance light travels in one year. That works out to be. 186,000 miles per second or 5.88 trillion miles in one year. The observable universe is a ball-shaped region of the universe comprising all matter that can be observed from Earth or its space-based space telescopes and exploratory probes at the present time. It stretches 93 billion light years. Scientists believe that the universe is at least 250 times larger than the observable universe. The complete universe cannot contain God. He is larger than it. Do you see what I'm saying about how big God is? Sometimes when, when God tells us to do something, I get back on. We don't understand who we're talking to. Isaiah 4 12 says something. He measures the water in the hollow of his hand. Water in the earth, he measures in, in, in when he cups his hand. He measures it. Cup of his hand. Measures everyone with, with, with a span. A span is for those who play marble. It's between your, your finger, your big finger, your little finger. When it stretched out the mar to, to the span. That's a span. God said that he, he measures heaven with, with one span. One stretch of his big finger and little finger. Right? I'm going to give an example. They said the earth has 226 quant quintillion gallons of water. That is 226,000 with 18 zeros. Gallons of water. The earth God hold that in the, in the cup of his hand. Can you copy hand? God hold the, the, all the water in the earth in the cup of his hand. Right? The span of God, hand, covers more than 253, 250 times, 93 billion light years of space. One span, when I'm all at man, I'm trying to give us a feel. What that means is that there's a misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit. Um, sometimes what is that means that it's our feelings. We call the Holy Spirit. But the truth be told, God wants us to, to learn. Amen. Give me a second. I'm trying to close this. There's so much more to God than that means I. But the eyes have not seen or ear heard of big God is. So sometimes what you call a Holy Spirit is really your feelings. In fact, it's, it's, so, it's so important that God, that Jesus said, if you speak a word against me, you never be forgiven at all. In eternity, not forever and ever, ever. If you speak a, a word against him, bless me against him. So what, what, what sometimes I said to people, 
Don't say the Holy Ghost. Just say, I believe. I believe it's God. I believe. Because if you believe, and you're right, there's no problem with it. If, if it says the Holy Ghost and it's not him, you're lying. Does that make sense? Hello? Yes, sir. I understand. Um, yeah, I understand. Um, I know that the, 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 the attributes of the Holy Spirit is different from angels. Oh, by far, by far. By far. Because um, if God can, the Godhead, if God can hold so much in his palm and is so quicker, and it is he who have created angels. Yes, yes. He's the one who created angels, so he must have more power and swifter than angels, even though angels are so quick. But as you said, um, oftentimes the Holy Spirit is we, we we have a feelings and say it's the Holy Spirit. Um so sometimes we must just say, you know, thank I God or whatever. I, I believe, yeah. Yeah, I believe. But um, it's just the difference between how angels, you know, um, manifest themselves. We sometimes might mix it up with saying the Holy Spirit are the difference between how they move. Well, well the Holy Spirit, that... Holy Spirit use angels as well. Sometimes it sent angels to care out some things. It's not, imp it's not important. To identify who doing it. The issue is whether it's from God or not. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any more comments, questions? Um, let me ask a question. Have any anybody have we learned anything today? As 